Hello everyone, my name is Jessica Willis and I'm a clinical psychology study student at the California School of Professional Psychology at Align International University, San Diego. Today we are going to be reviewing the Dialectical Behavioral Therapy or DBT, Distress Tolerance and Crisis Arrival Skill, Distract with WiseMind Accepts. This skill, just like most DBT skills, is generalizable to various situations. Crisis survival skills, these being the stop skill, pros and cons, tip your body chemistry, distract with wise mind accepts, self-soothe with the five senses, and improve the moment, or developed specifically to help most when attempting to tolerate painful events, urges, and emotions when you cannot make things better right away. They are, by definition, short-term solutions to painful situations. So what exactly is the purpose of engaging in one of these skills anyways? Well, it's to make a painful situation more tolerable so that it's possible to refrain from impulsive actions that can make the situation worse. So what exactly does distracting with wise mind accepts mean? For people who are new to DBT, let's break this down into three different sections. Wise mind, distracting, and putting them together with distracting with wise mind accepts. Now, according to Dr. Marsha Linehan, developer of dialectical behavioral therapy, there are three states of mind. Emotion mind reasonable mind, and wise mind. When someone is in emotion mind, they are being ruled by their moods, feelings, and urges to do or say things. In this mind, facts, reason, and logic are not important. They can be described as mood dependent, emotion focused, and hot or raging with emotion. When someone is in reasonable mind, the opposite of emotion mind, they are ruled by facts, reason, and logic. Values and feelings are not important here. In this mind, people can be described as rational, task-focused, and cool. Wise mind is the point of overlap or synthesis between emotion and reasonable minds. It is typically described as the wisdom within each person. Everyone has a wise mind, and thus everyone is capable of making wise-minded decisions. In this mind, people are able to see the value or truth of both reason and emotion, and are able to make a mindful, wise-minded decision. Now that we have a foundation of the three states of mind, let's talk about distracting. When a person is in a crisis, distractions can help by avoiding dangerous behaviors, but distractions can be easily overused. Thus, before we dive into when distractions would be useful to use, let's examine when they would be less useful. Let's also continue to keep in mind that this is a crisis survival skill, which means that we only want to rely on this skill in the short term. For example, if you are in the middle of a work meeting and are suddenly overcome by intense aversive emotions or urges, most people cannot just leave the office for the day to distract themselves with one of the accept skills. While leaving for the day might seem appealing most days than not, it is not an effect or reasonable reaction to having intense aversive emotions. Rather, the more effective route to pursue is to pause, accept that the emotion is there, choose one or many substantial distraction skills, and implement the skill in the short term, and then return back to the situation with a more wise-minded perspective. Let's take a moment to pause now and think about what the first thought is 
that pops into your head when you think of the phrase mindfulness practice. For most of us, when we think of the phrase mindfulness practice, we think of attempting to let go of distractions and coming back to the present moment. However, when we get consumed by intense emotions, urges, or stuck in ruminative thoughts, for example, it can be very difficult to remain in the present moment. As Dr. Marsha Linehan describes, when your emotional pain or upset becomes so great that you are in danger of being overwhelmed by it at work, at school, or at meetings, it may be more effective to distract yourself from the feelings in the moment instead of fully experiencing them. Intentional distractions can also be useful when you have a problem that can't be solved immediately and urgency to solve the problem right now is making it difficult to focus on anything except the crisis. Distracting methods work by reducing contact with the triggering stimuli, or in some cases, the most painful aspects of the stimuli. They can also work by changing parts of an emotional response. For instance, after watching a scary movie, then want to watch a funny video. Okay, it's time. The moment you've been waiting for. Let's put these two aspects together and talk about the skill that we came here to learn. Distracting with wise mind accepts. If you haven't figured it out already, DBT uses a lot of acronyms with the skills. The acronym accepts stands for activities, discordant, to the negative or currently ineffective emotion, contributing, comparisons, emotions, opposite to the current negative or ineffective emotion, pushing away from the situation, thoughts, and sensations. Distracting from painful emotions or distress means turning one's attention to something else mindfully. Now, I'm going to walk you through each of the seven distracting skills. First off, activities. When we distract with activities, it's important that the activity you choose is, well, neutral or opposite to the negative or ineffective emotions and or crisis behaviors that you are experiencing. When we do so, these activities can work to reduce the impulsive urges and experience distress in a variety of ways. One, in the short term, distracting activities are able to fill the present moment with non-crisis oriented thoughts, images, and sensations. Two, these activities directly affect physiological responses and emotional expressive behaviors. Three, they can reduce emotional pain and often that often drives the crisis behaviors. For example, behavioral activation for clients with depression. Research supports that depressive symptoms will decrease when a person with depression engages in any sort of behavioral activity. Some examples for distracting with activities are renting a movie or watching TV, playing video games, going on a brief walk or quick exercise, listening to music, or calling a friend, or going out with them. Next is contributing. Contributing to someone else's happiness or general well-being allows one to try to forget their own problems for a while and experience someone helping someone else. Doing so refocuses the attention from oneself to others and what one can do for them. Some ideas Distracting with contributing include volunteering, surprising someone with something nice, for example, a card, a favor, a hug, a surprise party at your work, or just sending someone a thoughtful or funny message. When we use this skill, it not only bolsters feelings of joy and pride, but it also tends to increase feelings of connectedness with others. Some nice side effects. Next up, comparisons. 
This is another distracting skill that allows for the refocusing of attention from oneself to others. When using the skill, one is comparing themselves or their situation to others who are coping in the same way or less well, or generally the less fortunate. One can also compare one's state in the present moment to that of a past difficult time. Next is a hallmark example of using the comparison skill. And that's watching soap operas or some other dramatic media presence where people have problems worse than yours or a dramatized version of your situation and then <laughs> reflecting on your current emotions or situations. A caveat to the skill is that if used incorrectly, it can lead to invalidation, which is not the goal. Yep. Emotions. To use the skill, one must first know how to identify their present emotion. For help understanding emotions, please review the emotion regulation module of DBT. Assuming that you are able to identify either your primary or secondary emotion, begin generating all other emotions different than your present one. Doing so distracts your mind from the current situation and the aversive emotion that you are experiencing. The next thing to do is to engage in an activity that switches your current emotion to a more effective one. For example, if you're angry, then try reading a sad or nostalgic letter or even watching a sad movie or show. If you're scared, try watching a funny video, listening to a comedy podcast or some other soothing music. Make sure that whichever emotion or activity that you engage in, it is not something that will intensify the emotion that you currently feel. Essentially, don't make it worse for yourself. This can cue other crisis behaviors or intensify current ones. Next on the list is pushing away from the situation. This can be done either physically or mentally. By physically leaving the current situation, one is able to decrease contact with the emotional cues directly. One is also able to block the situation mentally by consciously inhibiting thoughts, images, and urges. One might put their worries in a physical or mental box, and then a box on a shelf. And when an intense thought, image, or urge arises, making a note of it and putting them in the box. Another idea might be repeatedly putting off destructive behaviors for brief periods of time. For example, continually delaying an urge to binge eat every five minutes for five minutes, reassessing and recommitting. Again, this is only a temporary solution. If this skill is not helpful after a few attempts, try out a different skill. Like thoughts. As with distracting with activities, distracting with thoughts is the short-term ability to fill the present moment with non-crisis oriented thoughts, images, and or sensations. This is my personal favorite skill with an accepts because I believe it to be the most externally accessible to people of all ages, because it does not require much movement, nor does it require much effort. Rather, it's a simple way to quickly distract your mind. For me, I found that driving in traffic alone for myself and for my clients to be emotionally vulnerable. When one uses the thought skill, I encourage the 54321 method of describing. This is saying aloud five things that you can see, four things that you can feel, three things that you can hear, two things that you can smell, and one thing that you can taste. One might also sing a catchy song or hum a catchy tune, count anything or repeat a mantra, whatever works for you. And last but not least, sensations. Intense sensations can help one focus on something other than the current distressing situation, 
sensation, or any type of emotional distress. For some, using the skill might involve coping skills or objects, such as squeezing a rubber ball or a squishy, putting on a weighted vest or blanket, listening to very loud or fast music, holding ice in your hands or mouth, taking a hot or cold shower, or even tasting something with an intense flavor, such as Tabasco sauce or a lemon wedge. So that just about wraps up this video, and I hope that you were able to add a new skill to your clinical toolbox. And before I end, I want to review the purpose of both utilizing crisis skills and particularly the purpose of using Distracting with Wise Mind Accepts. Remember, we want to use crisis skills when attempting to tolerate painful events, urges, and emotions when you feel like you cannot make things better right away. Again, by definition, these are short-term solutions to painful situations. And as Dr. Linehan writes, when your emotional pain or upset becomes so great that you are in danger of being overwhelmed by it, at work, at school, or at meetings, it may be more effective to distract yourselves from the emotions in the moment instead of fully experiencing them. So, a word to the wise mind. If the skill that you choose to use, whether it be one of the accept skills or not, is ineffective for you within the first few attempts, don't be afraid or discouraged. Try a new one. Not every skill is an effective skill for everyone. Lastly, whichever skills you pick and choose, be cautious not to overuse them. Thank you.